So the third major reason that the United States, uh, the American economy grew so much in the 1950s was quite simply consumerism. Uh, you know, and you can break that word down, consumer, right? Or even consume, right? This idea that, that the American people wanted to buy things. Uh, we'd have the Great Depression where nobody could afford to buy things. We have World War II where people are finally financially getting okay, but there's nothing to buy because you have rationing and you have, uh, you know, nothing's being made. Uh, then you get to the 1950s and, and these things come together where people have jobs and people are doing well economically and there's stuff that they can buy. Uh, so starting in the 1950s, the American people are buying things, not just the things they need, but the things they want. Uh, and that's a real distinction and uh, in consumerism is, you know, are you just buying the, the groceries you need to make the dinner or are you buying all the extra stuff that you don't really need? Um, and Americans are buying things big and small. Uh, you have this first generation of uh, a new credit card, the Diners Club, uh, which was a general use credit card that was introduced in 1950, where before you could have credit with your grocery store, you could have credit with you know, some uh, particular shop, um, but it wasn't a card uh, and you couldn't use it anywhere. Uh, so that that culture of credit cards that we use today so so readily really starts in the 1950s at a much different scale than we have today. But but it's beginning. It's it's a lot easier to spend money if you hand somebody a little piece of plastic and you don't really have to think about it than if you have to actually count out the cash. Right? Are you going to spend twenty dollars on that if you've got to hand them a twenty dollar bill? Or are you going to spend $20 on that? So yeah, just put it on the card, whatever. Uh, I'll worry about the consequences later. Uh, so that's going to shift things and shifts people's attitudes a little bit. Uh, but people are buying things big and small. So um, an example I, I like to use with my classes are toasters. Right? So we don't we don't need toasters. Uh, you know, if you want to have some toast, you can, and you have a stove you, or, or an oven, you can put the bread in there and you can flip it over part way. But toasters are nice, right? Toasters are nice. And uh, this idea of that, that toaster that, that is the two slice toaster is good, uh, but boy, a four slice toaster would be even better. And I know I talked about this um, in, in, uh, when we talked about the 1920s and such, but the 1950s, it's like, uh, we're gonna get that five, four slice toaster. Uh, we don't need it. We can use our two slice toaster but a four slice toaster, that's pretty fancy. And, and you know, the Joneses next door got a four slice toaster and I can't sit here and make toast in front of Mary Jones when she's got a four slice toaster and I've just got this, you know, crappy little two slice toaster. So it, it's a shift, you know, it's, it's uh, this, this buy, feeling flush enough with their money to buy things they don't need. And that's gonna fuel the economy even more. Uh, it's also going to fuel debt, uh, but but people are really making more money in the 1950s, so so it is it is a little different. Uh, so they're buying little things. They're also buying big things. Uh, you have this huge housing boom in the 1950s. We see uh, around Denton, we see many of those houses uh, over in some of the older communities. Those very sm nice little houses, uh, you know, crackerjack houses, kind of you know where they're just these very simple floor plans, very small size, uh, and there's a whole row of them all together. And I'm gonna post some pictures of Levitt Town, uh, this idea of, of suburbia growing uh, out of the cornfields. And we're experiencing that in Denton all over the place, uh, I say, unfortunately. Um, but but uh, you, you've got to keep in mind the importance of home building to the economy. Even today, there's a quarterly report uh, uh, of uh, home building, you know, new home sales um, and construction. Because think about it, think about all the people that are gonna be employed to build one house. You're gonna have um, skilled, skilled workers, you're gonna have unskilled workers, you're gonna have people who are doing the framing, you're gonna have people who are doing the, the electricity and the plumbing and the roofing, uh, not to mention the people who sell the land, prepare the land, 
Um, and, and then you got to furnish them. Once you buy this house, you got to put, put stuff in it. Uh, so a new home can affect a lot of different parts of the economy. And in the 1950s, you have, um, in the year 1950, you have a million new homes being built. A million new homes being built because remember, you've got all these young people getting married and having babies and they don't want to live with mom and dad. Uh, so they're going to they're going to buy these these houses. By 1960, one quarter of all the houses in America had been built in the previous decade. Right. So so a quarter of all the houses in the United States by 1960 had been built in the last 10 years. Uh, so this is this is a huge deal. And again, this shift to the suburbs. Uh, was a very big deal. The, the movement out of urban America, uh, part of the reason is now you have better roads. Part of the reason is you have cars. Now you're going to see a lot of two-car families, uh, which is going to be a part of this consumerism, this idea of dad going to work in the city, mom staying home with the five or ten kids, mom's going to need a car, to be able to uh, get them from school to wherever they need to go, go to the grocery store, uh, and dad's gonna need the car to take to the city. So you start to see in the 1950s, two car families, uh, which, which was a huge shift uh, from the decades prior to this, right? So think about this overall big picture of the growth of the American economy in the 1950s. Three big things, government spending, the baby boom, and mass consumerism, and they're all connected, and they're all going to work on the growth of the American economy. Now, there's a second set of videos uh, on some of the retrenchment in American society, so be sure to take a look at those.